right, and cut. I think we got it. Cool, man. Uh, you edit that. Okay, cool. Um, anything else you need? Uh, uh yeah. Uh, you know how your job's like to hold the camera really steady? What if you opened up with like a tight 20 minute set in like 75 cities across the country for me? Okay. No, totally. Um, like right now? Okay. Uh, see ya. Make some noise for Jake Triplett! Chicago, how are we doing tonight? Awesome, this is so much fun. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, right off the bat, looks like we have a lot of ladies in the house tonight. Which, yeah, is fun. And uh, let's see, a couple of guys from what I can see. Thank you for being here. Looks like a Hobby Lobby in here or something. <laughs> Let's see, I like to make every show a little different. I like to talk to the fellas. Um, you, sir, what's your name? Matt. And uh, what do you do for a living, Matt? I am an executive director for a nonprofit. You're an executive director. Okay. What do you direct? <laughs> Electrical Contractors Trade Association. Electrical Contractors Trade Association. Can you have a job that would be funnier? easy to work with. Okay, I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of all my electrical contractor jokes. Just not not getting the spark. So Don't laugh at that. That was not no, that was not. I mean, that is literally all I have. So um, okay, so Matt, you're sitting here. You do God knows what for a living. But um, I can only assume must be a massive Trey Kennedy fan. Um, what's your favorite video of his of all time? Matt has no clue. Matt has no idea. I think Matt thinks that I'm Trey Kennedy. He's like, this is a, this is a weird start. This guy's talking in the third person a lot. I hope that stops. Well, if you're like Matt and have little to no clue what's happening right now, let me fill you in a little bit. Uh, a couple things you need to know about me. Uh, first of all, my name is Jake Triplett. I've been working with Trey on all the videos, the podcast, everything for almost four years now. Uh, but if you'd like a little bit more fun, a little more specific description of what I do for a living, it goes like this. Uh, a few times a week, I will go over to this guy's house. And at a certain point, I will pull out my camera. And then once his wife has left for work, <laughs> he will put on some of her clothing. And then uh, we just kind of make some magic happen from there, you know. <laughs> Chase them around the house. Uh, take the footage, upload it to the internet for millions of people to see. And uh, we end up here at a sold out theater. So, yeah. Those are the steps. Those are the steps. Uh, I'm glad you guys appreciated that. I said the same thing to my grandpa and he didn't think it was quite as funny as you guys did. So, thank you guys. Um, second thing you need to know about me is how I grew up. I grew up in Southwest Missouri, um, tiny little, uh, we had a fist bump there, yes. Respectful, but still loves meth, so. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with that part of the country, we're kind of known for two things, uh, dairy farming and the Delta variant. Um, <laughs> those are kind of just our main two things. Uh, <laughs> Made two exports, really, that we provide, and it was a good year, it was a good harvest for everybody, so. It is shocking. I mean, any time I talk to someone who still lives in that town, I mean, to this day, they think COVID-19 was like a weight loss program or something. You know, like, oh, it's like a whole 30, but less days, and let's try that. They try it, they are good at it, so it's too bad, but. Um, Growing up on the farm, I grew up very sheltered, very Christian, you know, churchy upbringing. Uh, I did well in school, but I fell very behind in other areas like common knowledge. <laughs> Not a study guide for that. It was a little tricky. I, I'll never forget, uh, I was like in a hotel lobby, going to the restroom. I was excited because it's one of my first times leaving the driveway. And <laughs> uh, the bathrooms were co-ed. Anyone could use them. I go in and in the stall, there's a sign that says, do not flush feminine products down the toilet. And I, I remember thinking, why would anyone flush a purse? Down? 
It was so confusing for me. But I was like, I mean, they had to put the sign up for somebody, right? It has to mean something. Some hooligan out there on a regular basis is just flush and scrunchies down. <laughs> All right, I don't know. <clears throat> I remember a couple years later, uh, I was in seventh grade, a girl in my class came up to me and asked me if I preferred Big Spoon or Little Spoon. And I told her, you know, it, it depends on what I'm eating. <laughs> Right? Can't just look you in the eyes and make a blanket statement on spoon size. I don't know. So it was tough growing up. Uh, my parents were the type of parents, 100% true story, they would not let me watch Harry Potter because of the witchcraft. That was a no-no in our house. Um, they also, this is interesting, they wouldn't let me watch Twilight because those movies are terrible. This guy hates Twilight. <laughs> I will say though, I'm still Team Jacob. It's still Team Jacob. Um, well, the one from the Old Testament. <laughs> he was the one. I knew way more about him. He was a good guy. So uh, that's a little bit of how I grew up. I'm all grown up now, uh, you know, at least for the most part. I can feel there's a little vibe in the room tonight. Like this guy could be 30, or he could still be stressed about algebra. I don't know. <laughs> one or the other, all the time. People like to tell me how young my face looks and uh, you know, it's always unsolicited. I never ask. <laughs> hey stranger, how young does my face look to you right now, you know? <laughs> they just tell me. It, it happened recently on Twitter. I woke up to a notification one day, the tweet said, uh, Jake Triplett looks like if Steve Irwin was 18 years old, but less attractive. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, you know, that stings. Um, <laughs> Okay. Hold on. Two things. Let's just hold on. One, for a lot of you guys, that took a while to <laughs> comprehend. And second of all, are half the people in the room related to Steve Irwin? <laughs> Somebody shouted too soon. I I really figured city like Chicago, you guys would be like, hey, it's comedy, get up there. You could say anything, but don't you dare. <laughs> say a word about any Australian celebrity who's been dead 16 years, okay? It's off limits. Lesson learned, all right. I am all grown up though. I'm all grown up, I did it. Um, and I know that I'm grown up because certain things are starting to happen to me. Let me explain. It feels a little bit like a second go around with puberty, the way my body is changing, okay? <laughs> listen, listen. I remember my first, uh, first puberty as a, as a kid, I came out of it uh, noticing women for the first time. I was like, okay. Uh, but adult puberty, I come out of it and now I find myself noticing exposed brick for the first time ever. <laughs> I mean, just one day out of nowhere, I was just found myself in someone's living room, just going, is that, is that exposed brick over there? Oh, and is that is the original brick? Oh. I love when it's all natural. That is awesome. That is great. Another aspect of adulthood, uh, this I really don't understand, is this whole idea of convincing ourselves we enjoy drinks that taste terrible. I don't get it, there's all sorts of them. I wanna talk about a couple. First, there's kombucha. I'll never forget my first time encountering kombucha. I saw my friend drinking what looked like algae out of a mason jar. <laughs> and I was like, what, what is going on over there? And he goes, oh, I'm just uh, I'm sipping on booch. So, oh, ew, what? <laughs> don't ever say that again. <laughs> go get something else, go get a hobby, I don't know. Another drink I don't get uh, is LaCroix. Now, um, LaCroix, I, I hear some groans, and that's because the audience is primarily white women. <laughs> if you don't know LaCroix, it's like if you took carbonated water and you were just looking around for things to flavor it with. <laughs> and then, Lucky you, you found an old used popsicle stick. 
just stir this in there. That'll be, I mean, just the right amount of flavor. That's... And all my friends, they say the same thing every time. They go, well, it, it's an acquired taste. You just gotta acquire it, um, which is stupid because there's just, there's too many drinks that tasted great the first time you ever had them, right? I didn't need to acquire anything. Think about it. Dr. Pepper, cherry limeade, your mother's nipple. Right? These things were amazing the first time. I feel like we were building some momentum until I got to the third item there. I lost some of you. I don't know if we have a lot of people in the room that grew up bottle fed. Uh, if you did and you're offended, um, I welcome a fight. You're not as strong as me, so. Bring it on. That's probably enough breastfeeding content for the night. Um, Let's get back to uh, Front Row Matt, right? Um, front Row Matt, he always brings the energy. Um, Matt, who are you here with tonight? Your wife, Lexi. Okay, how long have you guys been together? 10 years, okay. That's a decent amount of time though. Uh, the crowd didn't really think so. This, this is the kind of crowd that if you've been married less time than Steve Irwin's been dead, they don't really care. <laughs> not really interested, just reminds them of that era, so. Wait, you've been married for four years? But you've been together nine years before that? What a complicated algebra equation here. So, hold, hold, whoa, okay. So when you said 10 years, what number were you thinking? There's like four different numbers that could have been the right answer and 10 is not one of them. So what, hold on, you were together nine years, just, just dating, just nine years of dating? How do you go from nine years to like, now it's time, now it's, now it's time. Your sister-in-law helped, Ugh. okay, I don't, that doesn't sound healthy. Um, okay, let's, final question of the night. You've been married, who knows how many years? Um, do you have any um, maybe relationship secrets, maybe relationship tip? What are you doing right? How do you keep the fire alive? Um, give me one tip, Matt. You watch lots of Trey Kennedy? You watch lots of Trey Kennedy? From the guy who couldn't think of a single one you enjoyed 10 minutes ago. That is good, that is good. Give me a lot of good stuff to work with the night we're taping. This is good, glad I called on you. I can't razz you too much though, because um, you have something I don't. I am uh, very unmarried, uh, very single. If you couldn't tell by the Target outfit that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> Nobody's dressing me in the morning. You know, it is just, just me and Goodfellow and Co. against the world. <laughs> trying to figure it out, but. And I've been single for a while is a thing. It's, it's been several Summer Olympics worth. I'll say that. <laughs> Which is never good when your point of reference for anything is Beijing in 08. <laughs> but that's how it is. That's how it is. And uh, there's people in my life, especially kind of the, the older, you know, family members or people in my life, they're always asking me, like, I just don't get it. Why aren't you married yet? I tell them, look, it's not me, it's the supply chain. <laughs> Same reason a lot of things don't work right now, you know? But I'm trying to make things happen. I'm trying to go on dates. I was on one recently and it was going well uh, up to a certain point. She looks up from her meal and she goes, oh, do, you ever just, do you ever just feel like you were born in the wrong generation? And I said, nope. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even fully understand what that question means. I don't think. I was like, maybe she just watched Back to the Future or she's having a stroke. <laughs> Need to call someone, I don't know. She goes, no, I just, I'm such an old soul, you know? Uh, I just feel like I belong in a different century. And I was like, ooh, okay, <laughs> different century. That is uh, pretty serious. <laughs> Good luck uh, with polio. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be as, as whimsical as you think it's gonna be. <laughs> you wanna get swept off your feet, that'll do it.
there's this infatuation these days. We're wanting to go back in the past, revisiting it, and I just, I don't get it. I think we have it so good now, especially in America. You know, people used to get diarrhea and die. <laughs> and I get diarrhea for fun. <laughs> you guys are very pro-diarrhea crowd tonight. <laughs> really resonating with that, wow. Well, I tell you, I can, I can walk you through my process if you want. Um, you know, it's not hard. It never is, actually, in its nature. You know, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Um, step one is Taco Bell, right? That's easy. I like to wait till about 12.30, 1 a.m. My body thinks it's time for sleep. Not even close. We're having a fiesta, baby. Get in the car. I like to go through the drive-thru. I like to order two beefy five-layer burritos, okay? Total of 10 layers. Should get the job done. What's cool, this is kind of neat. What's cool about Taco Bell is whether you order it or not, you will receive a, a Baja Blast of sorts. So that's, that's good verbiage on their part. Perfect name. And then, uh, you know, once you have your food, go home, go straight home. Don't stop anywhere. <laughs> Clock's ticking. And then once you're home, uh, let the games begin. <laughs> Sit down, you know, pee out your butt for about six minutes. Repaint the toilet seat. That's a Friday. I don't want to give that up. I, I don't need a girlfriend. I need a wet wipe is what I need. <laughs> Man, how am I single, right? Oh. <laughs> Between the, the breastfeeding and the diarrhea, just a lot of liquid. But um, actually, before I forget, I do want to say a genuine thank you to each and every one of you guys who came out to see us tonight. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. This whole tour has been so much fun for us. We don't take it for granted, especially everything that's happened in the last two years. Uh, March of 2020 specifically was a special time, right? Things got shut down, but other things happened. Um, you know, Tiger King was on. That was fun. <laughs> My mom was Lysoling the groceries, which was equally as exotic. <laughs> but one of the other things that happened, I'll never forget it, uh, I got my first ever COVID test. And uh, I don't know how they do it up here, but where I'm from, I remember driving up to the testing site, and as I get closer to it, I just, I swear, I, it looks like I'm being tested at an abandoned Kohl's or something. <laughs> I'm double checking the address, I'm like, all right, this is the, this is the place, here we go, let's do it. <laughs> I get to uh, the building, out walks a guy, and he's wearing scrubs, but I, I swear he used to work at Kohl's, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just kind of had that Coles vibe about him. <laughs> He's asking me, you ever been COVID swab before? And I'm telling him, no, real excited though. Um, <laughs> He's like, okay, here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna take this swab. Uh, I'm gonna stick up your nose one inch, just one inch. It should take about 10, 15 seconds or so. I was like, okay, great. He puts it up there and two things happen. One, I said, crikey. That was for you guys. That was for you. You guys know him. You guys love him a lot. So, Second thing that happened, this is a little more normal, is uh, tears just start streaming down my face, right? I can't help it. It's embarrassing. At a certain point, I feel like actual memories start flashing before my eyes. I don't know if death is imminent or uh, the Coles employee is just uh, so far up my nose that he's literally touching the part of my brain that stores long-term memory. <laughs> he's just, I mean, we are, we are in the parking lot shared with Best Buy, and this guy is just jogging memories before me. Like, this, this is nuts. Eventually, though, it's finally over, it's finally done with, he pulls it out, and the only thing I could think to say to him was, dude, if that is an inch, my wife is gonna be so happy someday. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> All right, my name is Jake Trouble. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>